Welcome everyone to episode 20 of Boom Mike Banter. This is Nick. I'm riding solo today. And more importantly, still riding fucking sober. It's a goddamn fucking sober October. So we made a bunch of plans, of course, like us young hopeful kids do, of every end of the week we we're going to have a catch up on Sober October and how the fuck we're doing. Um, but between me, Stork, and Wilden and our plans and what the fuck has been going on, we're all very fucking busy. So apologies because I was really hoping to get a podcast out once a weekend to get this shit going, but it just wasn't in the fucking cards. I'm sorry. So that's why I'm doing a podcast now and at least solo to catch you guys up on what the fuck's been going on. And also to give you some good news on how the fuck we're ending Sober October, so that should be fun too. So catching up first. Uh, so me, Stork, and Wilden, all still sober, all fucking doing the thing. As I'm recording this right now, it's the 13th, so nothing, you know, it, it, we're just hitting the halfway mark, so nothing too fucking crazy. Um, I've been churning along, I've been doing well. My biggest gripe or hang-up I thought was going to be working out, because the sobriety thing isn't that big of a deal to me. I know, um, for Stork, he kept bringing it up like it was going to be this huge fucking thing, and for me personally, I'm almost exclusively a social drinker. I only drink when I'm hanging out with people and just trying to have a better time. Like, that's <laughs> that's the only reason why I need to drink. And not even need to drink. It's, you know, want to drink. So, for me, it, it really hasn't been that big of a deal. And I've been hanging out with just as, like, I've, I've been just as sociable is what I'm trying to say. I've been just as sociable and I've still been having a really good time, and I'm always just trying to be funny and be on top of shit, and it's been working pretty well. The only thing that is difficult, ironically enough, is doing shit like this, because <laughs> usually I'll have a drink in me or two, which makes it easier to talk, so talking completely straight just into a microphone, especially without a guest, is a little bit tough, so apologies if I either ramble or fuck around or something. So... Uh, that is definitely like the number one worst thing. The second I thought was going to be working out, but working out has actually been great. The first two times were very obnoxious. And after I've done that, because I've pretty much been working out every other day now and it's been, I've felt great. I haven't felt better, which is really surprising because I thought I was going to feel like absolute dog shit. I thought my body was going to be super sore. I thought it was going to be like completely fucking out of it. But no, I've been I've been feeling really good and I'm actually feeling better and even tonight, like tonight I'm actually looking forward to working out, which is fucking weird. I never thought I was gonna be that human. And that also could change though. I'm not I, I don't wanna try to be this fucking complete positivity fucking train. Not that that's not a good thing. It's just that's just not who I am and that I, I don't wanna be fake about just trying to benefit myself for two weeks and make it sound like I've fucking turned the entire fucking world around because I absolutely have not it's I started a good thing and I'm seeing how it goes but I will say this based on how I have been feeling and the improvements that I've already been seeing in just two weeks I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep working out maybe even this consistently even after this month I think I'm just going to keep working out and see how it goes I think after a a few months I might take a break from working out um after sober October I'm definitely drinking though like come November 1st I'm getting fucked up so I'm really looking forward to that (laughs) but on a workout on a workout perspective yeah I'm gonna keep that going because I think it's actually really good and even though I want to kick stork in the face him recommending that in the beginning has actually been a really good blessing in disguise because I really thought I was gonna fucking hate it but also that was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to do it. Cause I really want to push myself in that sense. Cause for me, I knew drinking wasn't going to be the problem. It was going to be working out and that could get worse though. So we'll fucking see how it goes. I know for Wilden, he's still been killing the game. He's been struggling a little bit with the sobriety part. I think all of us have, we're just all in our fucking mid to late twenties. So, you know, having a fucking drink at the end of the night wouldn't fucking hurt anybody. Not to mention like having a big fucking you know, fucking 20 something hangout and just have a bunch of drinks. It's also really fucking nice to unwind. So yeah, we're all just waiting. (laughs) We're all just fucking waiting at the, uh, at the edge of our fucking seats for the first and to lead into that. So on the first, I'm going to have Stork and Wilden back on. 
we're and and this one I genuinely mean I'm not fucking around with this one this time. We're gonna have both the fucking guys on. We're gonna have some drinks, hang out, catch up, fucking recap on how bad the month's been. Talk about you know our best times or worst times. What the fuck we plan on doing after sober October if we plan on doing any portion of it. Um, so it should be really interesting. I'm I'm genuinely looking forward to it. And <laughs> the one thing I did bring up on the last recording was if anybody else wanted to do it to let me know and i was not surprised at all i only heard from one person which isn't that big of a fucking deal uh most of my listeners are you know people in their fucking mid-20s so i'm not surprised at all that people want to get drunk as fuck you know for the month of halloween so shout out to my one buddy grant who did sober october for four fucking days (laughs) he started he fucking texted me on the 31st of like hey i think i'm gonna do it I was like, fuck yeah, man, like, good, I'm sorry, the 30th, 31st doesn't fucking exist for September, and he hit me up and was like, yeah, he's like, I think I'm gonna do it, and I was like, fuck yeah, dude, like, fucking go for it, man, like, let me know the progress, let me see what's happening, that motherfucker, three, three to four days in, fucking just texted me, he's like, yeah, I, th- I, I think I'm out, I'm like, this fucking piece of shit, so shout out, Grant, thank you for trying, but also, uh, you know, fucking just, just do better next time, man, <laughs> No, I love him. I love him to death. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much it for Sober October. Also, apologies to you guys, because I know I'm fucking just riding this shit. Fuck. I mean, first of all, sober and just more of recapping. I'm talking by myself. So this one's going to be way fucking shorter. I, I honestly think this one's going to be on like a 20 minute um, gist. So the other really big thing I want to talk about, because sobriety is lame as fuck, and I don't want to talk about that for more than five minutes. Um... <laughs> was finally because everybody's uh there's two major subjects i want to bring up and both of them are about cinema ironically enough so the big thing that everyone was fucking ranting and raving about and stork wouldn't shut the fuck up about was joker so joker came out you know critical acclaim everyone's fucking loving it some people are hating it some people think it's too fucking violent and i'm gonna break it all down but first let me just tell you my initial thought of the movie i thought the movie is very good if I had to give the... Also, uh, let me stop right here before I get... <laughs> uh, spoilers, the movie's good. Uh, I'm now, at this point, going to talk about spoilers in the movie. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, um, yeah, just, uh, you know, fucking don't listen to this anymore. And if you want to listen to what I have to say about this movie, you're going to listen right now. And we're here right now. And here we go. So, <laughs> I thought the movie was really good. I thought the movie was great. If I had to give the movie a letter grade, I'd probably give it a B plus the only reason I'm not giving it higher of a grade is because of the biggest gripe that I have with the movie so to start on an unrelated subject and then I'm going to bring it back I swear Martin Scorsese is my favorite you know director of movies period Tarantino is a strong second but Scorsese is my number one and this movie in a lot of beats uh, completely copies Taxi Driver. And I don't mean shows a little bit or pays a little bit of homage to. I mean straight up fucking copies a lot of Taxi Driver. And here's the thing. You want to show patronage to a fucking movie that you've loved or show a resemblance of another movie to get the audience on board and to get them, you know, better understanding stuff? Totally. I'm totally fucking on board for that. But when you when you bring it so close that you know, once, once we got halfway through the movie, all I was thinking at this point was, oh, how much more taxi driver shit can they fit into the Joker movie? I I will say this though, too. It wasn't just taxi driver. The other movie that I found, um, at least from when they're showing off the talk show and everything else was, um, was a king of comedy. And it, it, so, so to just bring up some glaring, you know, stuff, um, for I'm assuming people that have seen it or for some reason people that just want to hear me rant and rave about that haven't seen it. So the gunshots at the head, the infamous thing of Taxi Driver at the end of Taxi Driver, he's going, he's putting the, you know, hand, like his hand as a gun. It's weird to describe because it's an audio podcast. I wish I could just show you the his hand in the shape of a gun to his head and he's going, um, they do that joke back and forth like fucking three times um, in the Joker movie, um, in Taxi Driver, there is a 
whole campaign trail for this one mayor that's, you know, trying to get elected in the Joker movie, fucking Thomas Wayne is running for mayor. And then that's a whole pivotal point of the movie as well. Uh, Joker jumps into uh, a whole petition, um, you know, uh, stand a setup of, you know, he's, he's, uh, trying to at least like see what the fuck the rioters are going about and same thing with fucking taxi driver it it's just it it's a lot you you see a character constantly let down by society which is i know that's a very generic but the the direction of how they go about it you know a guy in a very lonely apartment and only having like a friend or two you know it it's there's so many similarities and I posted this status on Facebook and I mean this ever, ever true. Even now, after I had a couple days to think about it, because at first I thought about it for a day before I posted it. And then even when I posted, I thought about it for two more days because I was actually thinking about removing it, like removing the status that I made. The status that I made is this, and this is exactly what I'll say for anyone who's thinking about the Joker. So the Joker movie, I should say anyone who has not seen King of comedy or taxi driver will think Joker is a completely original jaw-dropping, brilliant movie piece of art from top to bottom. It completely inspires its own thing. The problem is it isn't, and it it takes a, it, it takes too many beats, in my personal opinion. It takes too many beats from other movies, it, particularly two, and enough where it is glaring. It's not just distracting, it's glaring. That's my biggest gripe with the movie. Now let me actually talk about some benefits, because like I said, I still overall love this movie, and I would genuinely see this movie again. It's not, it, I don't have a disdain for the movie. Let me first talk about the absolute best thing about this movie, which is Walking Phoenix. Walking Phoenix annihilated, annihilated the fucking role. What he wanted to do as Joker and do a completely unique take on it, completely knocked it out of the park. He killed the type of character that he was going for and I was thoroughly impressed I wasn't disassociated from his performance at all even sometimes when he was going a little bit out there I I understood it from the character and the way that the movie was going and that's very difficult there's some I mean even some amazing actors that could try to pull that off and there'd be that moment of disconnect but I did not have a moment of disconnect from at least what the character or for at least how walking phoenix was portraying the character that's what i want to say obviously i wasn't rooting for and or siding with what the character was doing for a majority of the movie but i was into his performance of how he was going in it that i was never disassociated with which is very fucking important on you know a movie which is essentially a fucking one character uh you know, this is my opinion, but, you know, bear with me, um, a biography without a narration. And that was an interesting take. I'm kind of 50, 50 on that. I almost, if I could have done the movie a little bit differently, if I had any input on the movie whatsoever, being uh, a complete nobody, I would, I would have wanted Joker to actually have, like, I would have wanted like Arthur Fink to actually have a narration, um, a long side the movie and not throughout the whole thing just throughout a couple pivotal points because if you're gonna if, if you're gonna do like taxi driver and stuff do one of the best parts of goodfellas which is the fucking narration on top of stuff and the main character because something i think that i would like about joker that i've liked in the comics and i know this is a completely original uh take but one thing that i would have liked that they would have taken from the comics is him being so unhinged and him being so disassociated with the truth and him more just trying to tell a story that even more as the audience, we could have been watching it going, wait, is this even happening? Is this even story by the end of it even true or something like that? And not to make the whole thing a what if, because that could be really stupid. You don't want to make the whole movie pointless, but just get you to think about that sometimes. Like one of the two of the scenes that always stand out for me are the most obvious one, which a lot of people talk about, which is the whole pretty much fact that he made up having a girlfriend. Obviously, there was his, you know, uh, neighbor in the apartment, you know, is the other tenant. And he imagines like, you know, after 
after just having a subtle conversation with her in an elevator, um, them talking even after that, even after he stalked her, which was a fucking bananas thing to do. And then on top of that, and then just walking to her fucking door the next time he sees her and then just start kissing her out of nowhere. I was like, what the fuck? Which then I was like, thank God. Cause that, that was for me. That was the moment of disbelief. That's where I was like, wait a minute, this would never fucking happen in real life. Like what the fuck? But at that point I was like, all right, the movie's just going this way. So cool. But then it definitely rectified it in that moment and was, you know, and then it was all him in his own brain. But I would have liked that more if more things would have just made a hint of that. Like another thing that I would like personally, I really would have loved is in the beginning of the movie, he's, you know, the sign spinner and doing that stuff. And then the kids break the fucking sign over him and then start beating the shit out of him. I would have loved just in the background of a fucking scene in his apartment while he was doing like a narration thing, if that was going to be a part of the movie while him narrating to the fucking audience Just in the background, like fuzzy, like not even clear, the sign is completely intact in, in like his fucking room showing that like he didn't even get beat up. He literally just like took the sign. So you don't know what to believe. Like, you know, is that part real? Is the part where he got beat up real? It totally puts you in question because that's, that's the type of shit I love about the Joker is there's actually a lot of mystery. Like you don't know you know, the true origin, or at, at least from the comics. Like, this one is very set up straight, but I personally would have liked if there was a little more mystery into it and a little bit more intrigue. Um, I really think that that just would have gone a long way. But yet again, just my opinion on it. I, I think that they did a very good job. I They did a very good job with the story that they told. And the only other, <laughs> the only other derp problem that I had was the... The score for the movie was really good, really good. The the score for the movie itself put me in the moods that I thought I should be feeling and really then even amplified those, which is beautiful uh, when that happens. The only thing that was really taking me out of it in those times, though, was when it was not the actual score of the movie and when it was, you know, actual songs that they were then using in reference of stuff there was a couple that you know that just totally threw me off um they did sinatra send in the clowns like two to three times they did the round two fucking gary glitter song which like i guess i i'm assuming i could be very wrong with this i'm assuming they put that in just for shock value and for people that knew the whole backstory with that you know to be like oh my god, I can't believe the craziness behind that song and everything else. And for people that just don't know, then they just go, oh, that's just a really cool song and, you know, whatever. So I think I, I'm mixed about it. I, I think the score is really good. I think the music choices outside of the score were just okay. I, I thought they kind of hit the low ball. If you want my honest opinion, I thought they kind of hit the low ball. I thought they could have got some other stuff and really fucking drove the thing home. The only other gripe that I had... Joker dances too much after he's, it, it's just his natural thing is just to dance like all the fucking time. I get, you know, he has the really epic moment after the murder, after he first like murders those three dudes on the subway. But then even after that, it's like he's dancing like four fucking times. And I like that he does it before the talk show. I like that the two camera fucking, I, I don't know what they are, either the producers or the camera operators or something are looking back and the dude like looks back like three times of like, dude, is this dude fucking like dancing? Like right before he hops on fucking stage. I love, I love that moment, but it was just, it was, it was way too much fucking dancing. I was just like, Jesus fucking Christ. I, I get the message that they're trying to, that they're trying to put across, but it was just at that point, it's either beat with a dead horse. They're just doing it too many fucking times yet again. Just my opinion. But like I said, would I see the movie again? Absolutely. fucking Like I thought it was a very good movie. I just also, rewatch taxi driver again after seeing it and i was just like yep this is this is this oh this is the other uh not a gripe that i had with a movie actually it's a gripe that i had around the movie so everyone freaking out that the movie's over violenced and completely you know too fucking intense and oh this movie is so dark oh my god um people need to shut the fuck up people are fucking babies if this is what we're going to consider too dark for cinema, it's fucking absurd. This is the biggest, worst 
publicity stunt I've I've seen in a long time, and it's more frustrating because the movie's actually good. Normally, you see this type of dog shit publicity when a movie's really bad, and then it's like, well, any publicity is good publicity, you know, like, let's, you know, put, um, I can't even fucking say that word, sorry, um, <laughs> let's just, you know, put some terrible buzz around it and see what the fuck happens, but, you know, just comparing a movie of Taxi Driver, I'm not going to throw up comparisons 55 more times, but all I want to say is this, you know, Scorsese is in Taxi Driver, not just directing, but he's in fucking one of the most pivotal scenes talking about violating a girl and then murdering her and then not even feeling bad about it and then even goading the fucking main character to do that. And if you would have fucking had that in fucking Joker in 2019, people would be losing their fucking minds. People would be losing their fucking minds. And Taxi Driver came out over 30 fucking years ago. Over 30 years ago, the violence in Taxi Driver is more intense. It, the violence in Joker is very real, though, too. I don't want to discredit that. But I'm sorry. Like, the intensity that Taxi Driver had being 30 years older and hitting the same type of beats. And, like I said, in some verbal instances, is far worse. You have an entire... I mean, one thing with Joker, the the movie Joker, that, that they don't really hit on at all is... Um, you know, sexual violence by any stretch. And at one point in fucking Taxi Driver, you have fucking De Niro trying to save a fucking 16-year-old, like, prostitute. Like, you can't fucking do that in 2019 now. You know what I mean? And 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 when I say that, I mean because people would lose their shit. I mean, is that to say someone can't make that movie? Absolutely not. I, I mean, everyone should be able to make what they want to make you know, out of artistic expression. I don't have a, you know, discern with that. As long as you're not actually harming anyone in making this movie, and as long as everyone still has a choice to see the fucking movie, because, listen, if you're offended by a movie, I get it, but at the same time, you also don't have to fucking watch it. It's not, no one, you know, you don't have to go every year, you don't have to go to the movie theater at all to go see a fucking movie. So, when people say they get offended by certain things, now, of course, um, some things in movies are just wrong, you know, and th that's a whole fucking, you know, different happenstance. But anyway, I'm not trying to take a moral fucking, you know, low road or high ground with it. I'm just saying, you know, if, if we're going to call shit violent and say it's the worst thing of all time and there's a movie that it directly compares to that is more violent. Come on, guys. Come on. What the fuck are we doing? Come on, guys and gals. That's all I'm saying doesn't make any sense to me it completely throws me off and yeah so i i think that was it i'm trying to think if there was anything else that i really was like joker was like shit oh oh my god this last thing so <laughs> this is one thing i'm gonna get a headache over for the next couple weeks because already a couple buddies of mine have done it and i'm already shrugging because i keep seeing it online some people are posting stuff and i'm sorry they're looking too deep into the movie. And I'm not trying to say that like a shitty person. I'm just being honest. Yeah, I, I just don't understand. You know, everyone's trying to look at uh, smaller pieces of symbolism and all this other stuff. And and I'm not discrediting that it's that some of it isn't there because it, it certainly is. And there's some subjects that have got brought up recently. And honestly, like, I'm not... I, I apologize because I'm bringing this up and then I'm kind of like half ass talking about it just for this subject because there's some stuff that they brought up. But honestly, I want to look into some more things just before I 100% like make a judge. Or, well, I don't want to bring up a subject now kind of half cocked with it because I just saw some stuff this morning and I don't want to be like throw all the shit out there and then 10 seconds later be like, oh, I'm a fucking idiot. I should have definitely, like, checked myself first. So I'm going to look into some stuff ahead of time, but there's a lot of, like, and not even, I mean, maybe there is. Maybe there is some one that's already tying a bunch of symbolism to it, but actually, no, that kind of is it. That that kind of is it. So, like I said, I'm going to look more into it. I'm going to double check some stuff, going to get my facts straight, you know, and go from there and see what happens. But it it's weird. So, like I said, I just listed off, like, 30 things I didn't like about the movie, but I really did like it. I really, really did like the movie. Oh my god, I didn't talk about so the two my uh, the two actually favorite parts of the movie that I love that I love that I love that I love that I could not get enough of is one. 
when Joker murders the three dudes on the subway that beat the shit out of him. So it was the first time he murders anyone. He kills the two out of the three. And when that first kind of happens, at first you're like, oh, well, that was, I mean, first you're like, whoa. But at the same time, he was defending himself. He did have a gun. You know, um, would you do it? That's a whole different thing. It's, okay, this happened, and that's a tangible line to run off of. But in the back of your mind, you go, okay, well, he could have easily did this out of self-defense. What does that, you know, that doesn't make him a, you know, a complete psychopath murderer. But then the minute you see the other dude who got, like, shot in the leg, and then he's, you know, and then he gets either shot, I think he gets shot again, or just from the gunshot to the leg, he's crawling and crawling to the stairs once he gets off of the subway. And then, I mean, he just slowly, like, Arthur slowly walks up to him and then just guns him down, like, four times. Was that solidified? It was like, nope, he had full intent to murder these three people once once the trigger got pulled the first time that is what was happening there was no remorse there was no regret you know he even brings that up later when he's talking to the dude he's trying to get him the paperwork on his mom at the psych ward you know that that i loved and the other thing that i really loved my other favorite scene and i and i wish this type of thing would have been in the movie more is so joker obviously for walking phoenix's character choice he you know has joker have the condition almost like a like a spasm or like a tick where you know um he's laughing at you know just uh he, he randomly his his tick is is laughter and sometimes it can actually be painful i mean you see him when he's having those moments the difference between him genuinely laughing and him laughing in that you know nervous tick of pain um in near the beginning of the movie he's there his uh his one buddy is like talking to him about something and then there is you know a person that they're making fun of and he's has his nervous laughter that he's laughing with them and then he turns the corner he's walking out the room while it's happening and when he turns the corner he goes from full laughter to complete dead silence it's like ha 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 and then complete fucking heel turn. And I love that because there was almost a moment of if they would have kept doing moments like that, that was that conspiracy thing that I almost had before of like, it really got you thinking like, wait, is that a real condition he has? Or is he just doing that, you know, all the time? And, you know, is it like him doing it to himself or is that really the setup? And that really is just where it got cut off. You know, that, um, that for me interested me the most when I saw that type of stuff. But like I said, as a, as a whole, walking fucking Phoenix just fucking annihilated, like completely killed it, like absolutely destroyed. Um, it's going to be interesting, too, because they, you know, they do kind of set it up where they could do another movie. I'll be honest, I, I really like them to just stop here, but I could also definitely see them do another movie. We'll fucking see. We'll, you know, we'll see what the hell happens. So anyway, guys, uh, let's just wrap it the fuck up here. We're just gonna wrap it up. We're just gonna wrap it up in a bomb. We're just gonna, we're just gonna wrap it. So yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you all for listening. Super appreciate it. Yet again, sorry this one's so long. Just, I, you know, I, I want to keep putting these out no matter what, even if I don't have a guest going on. I'm really fucking trying. So, you know, bear with me as I'm still in the middle of the process with this. And yeah, I, I don't know if I brought this up before. Shit. So anyway, at the end of the month, we're going to get all the fucking guys scared. That's going to be the next podcast. I might try to do something in between if I can. If not, like I said, just look forward to definitely November 1st where Stork, me, and Wilden are going to get drunk as a fucking skunk and shoot the shit, catch up, talk about how bad the fucking Sober October is and that we're probably never going to do it again. And yeah, we'll see. So anyway, guys, as always, good evening, good night, good luck. I love you all. Peace.